الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وبيته وصحبه أجمعين ثم أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم We are talking about a scholar who is commonly referred to as Sheikh al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah is one of those few people in history of Islam whose name you have to study if you are a student of knowledge It is impossible that you don't go through his ideas if you study Islam. Then, the like of any figure of such importance to knowledge, people either love him or hate him. And this is the sunnah of every scholar who has reached his degree. And as well as every prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is a sentence worth noting that you cannot understand Islam Even if you disagree with some of his ideas, still your understanding of Islam is hanging somewhere in between if you don't know the ideas of Ibn Taymiyyah. But in this video, my idea is not to share the ideas of Ibn Taymiyyah, but I want to bring his heroism back to our memory. I'm not qualified to share theology, but I can share a mere piece of history with you. Ibn Taymiyyah was born in the worst place. time of this ummah. We think that our time is bad, but Ibn Taymiyyah was born during the Mongol invasion. The Mongol invasion when none other than Genghis Khan or Genghis Khan, let me be clear, don't be fooled by hearing the surname Khan, Genghis Khan or Genghis Khan was not Muslim, okay? So this Genghis Khan out of nowhere invaded the Muslim lands when the Muslims politically were at their pinnacle of success. And Genghis Khan and his children and his grandchildren and his great grandchildren for over a hundred years all of them brought the whole of the Muslim Ummah to ruins and finally in the sometime in 13th century CE Ghulatu Khan made his way to Baghdad Baghdad the capital of the Abbasid Caliphate and he destroyed the entire city and he brought an end to the Abbasid Caliphate and he burnt the library to show that Muslim knowledge has now come to an extinction. And a million people were massacred in Baghdad. You did not use nuclear attack, nuclear weapons, literally by beheading people, making them stand in a queue for several days, a million people were beheaded. And you can imagine that nobody even moved from the queue because of the fear that if they find us running, if the Mongols find us running, they will rather crucify us. So it's better to be beheaded than be crucified. Subhanallah. This was the greatest political fitna from an outside power, at least until before the 20th century. In this time, Ibn Taymiyyah was born. And even in such a time, this person studies Islam, this person studies knowledge, let's not talk about Islam here, knowledge, not just of Islam, this person studied knowledge like never before and never after. If I ask a lay Muslim, give me one name of a scholar from the medieval Islam, I think, I think, that's my opinion, that the most common name I will hear is Ibn Kathir, Ibn Kathir Rahimahullah, maybe they will say Abu Hanifa Shafi, but They are early scholars. A medieval scholar, I think Ibn Kasir is the most famous because of, we can understand, Tafsir Ibn Kasir or stories of the Prophet Qusasul Anbiya. And if I ask that after that name, another scholar, probably, I think, I will hear Ibn Al-Qayyim. Rahimahullah. You all have heard of Ibn Al-Qayyim? The reason I'm saying this is Ibn Kasir and Ibn Al-Qayyim and Imam Al-Zahabi, all of these were students of Ibn Taymiyyah. Yes. Have you heard of Ibn Kasir? I'm sure you have. All of you have. Have you heard of Ibn Qayyim? Yes. Have you heard of Az-Zahabi? Maybe most of you must have heard this thing. Who is Ibn Kasir? A Mufassir. He did write the most famous work on the Tafsir of Quran. He is a historian as well. He wrote the largest encyclopedia of history. Al-Bidayah wa Nihayah, the beginning and the end, from the beginning of creation till the life in Al-Jannah wa Al-Jahannam. Look at Ibn al-Qayyim, he is a great historian and among the faqih he is one of the greatest the Ummah has produced. And al-Zahabi, Imam al-Zahabi, not just a historian and a faqih, but even a great muhaddis, subhanallah. I ask you, that you should ask yourself, that what did Ibn Taymiyyah teach them? Subhanallah, what did Ibn Taymiyyah teach them? 
all of his students are mastering several different fields of knowledge and Ibn Taymiyyah himself was at the peak of knowledge on so many fields of Islam. He was a true polymath. Subhanallah. You can say that Imam Malik was amazing because he produced Imam Shafi'i. And Imam Shafi'i was amazing because he produced Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal. And you can say Abu Hanifa was amazing because he produced Abu Yusuf al Shaibani. You know the level of a scholar by looking at his students. And Ibn Taymiyyah produced Ibn Kathir, Ibn Al Qayyim, Imam Al Dhahabi. And these are not the only names. These are the names that I think everyone is aware of. But the most appealing part of the life and times of Ibn Taymiyyah to me is not of his knowledge but his optimism towards the tough times in his life. Subhanallah, Ibn Taymiyyah was someone who was imprisoned several times by governors and kings for simply passing certain fatawa that were not prevalent at that time. Any time when Ibn Taymiyyah was imprisoned and a major part of his life was spent in imprisonment and he never married because when he was not in, in prison then he was doing jihad against we all know who the mongol invasion he was born in a tough time there was zulm on him from both sides the muslim kings and governors were against him and the mongols were against the whole of the ummah so when he was imprisoned his students used to come and meet him and ibn al-qayyim says that we used to feel sad for ibn taymiyyah and whenever we felt sad, we went to meet him and he would cheer us up. Subhanallah, this was his optimism. It's Ibn Taymiyyah who is imprisoned, but he was the one to cheer up his students. It's okay, I'm in the prison, it's alright, nothing's wrong, I'm alright. This was his optimism. And Ibn Al-Qayyim says that Ibn Taymiyyah once said to him, What can my enemies do to me? My Jannah is in my heart. Wherever I go, Wherever I will go, I will carry my Jannah with me. If they imprison me, then I get seclusion to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If they kill me, they have provided me with Shahada. That's what I want. And if they exile me, I go to visit the land of Allah. MashaAllah, I will go on a tour if they exile me. And I will contemplate on the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look at this mountain and look at the sky and look at the stars. I will contemplate on the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what can they do to me? Subhanallah, literally, what can you do to a man who says this? Just think about it. And he said, O oh, Ibn al-Qayyim, O oh, my student, remember, anyone who fears a creation has a disease in his heart. Subhanallah, what a wonderful advice. Look at the fear of creation in your heart as a disease. Then what do you do when you have a disease? Take your medications, right? And your medication in this case is fear Allah. Now it's time that you should truly start to fear Allah. And it will kill the fear of creation from your heart. He said, Ibn Taymiyyah said, Oh my student, whoever fears a creation has a disease in his heart. And he does not have true knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because if he had the true knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that was the medication for, the, for this disease in his heart. And do you want to hear a story? Do you want to hear a story that actually proves that Ibn Taymiyyah didn't have this disease of fear to the slightest in his heart? The Mongols who shook the Muslim Ummah to the core. And we all know how barbaric the Mongols were. So Ghazan has camped outside Damascus and he is threatening to raid Damascus and to make the city fall on the ground and he asks for a bunch of scholars to volunteer to meet Ghazan. We are the ulama of Damascus and we demand to see your king. Now you can imagine king and the sword versus the scholars and their words. Oh Allah you are the greatest nothing can come